This is Genesis. This nondescript 12-year-old laptop is possibly one of the most important laptops of the last 15 to 20 years. Though it was short-lived and deeply flawed, the first-generation MacBook Pro paved the way to one of the strongest lineups in computing history. To start, let's go back in time. And so today, we are introducing a new notebook computer that we are calling the MacBook Pro. It's a new name. On January 10th, 2006, the Apple ecosystem began a seismic shift. The move from PowerPC to Intel processors. This MacBook was the first. It also set off the fastest cycle of Mac upgrades in a single year that has ever happened. 2006 started with a familiar lineup. There were PowerBooks, 12, 15, and 17 inch, and Power Macs, as well as 17 and 20 inch iMacs and the Mac Mini. By the end of 2006, not one of those systems remained unchanged and two of them were erased from existence altogether. The long-respected PowerBook lineup was, almost overnight, chucked aside in favor of the MacBook line, one which has dominated year after year ever since. We're kind of done with power, and because we want Mac in the name of our products, so MacBook Pro. The MacBook kicked all of this off with a spec sheet that wowed audiences in 2006. It started with a 32-bit 1.83 GHz Core Duo, half a gigabyte of RAM, an 80 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive, and ATI Mobility Radeon X1600 graphics with just 128 megabytes of VRAM. This may not be impressive today, but this was miles ahead of the outgoing PowerBook. It was almost five times faster than the most powerful PowerBook thanks to the first dual-core processors included in every generation MacBook. There are going to be dual processors in every MacBook Pro. Additionally, Apple cleaned up the design. They hid antennas in the hinge, introduced the revolutionary MagSafe charger. They also included a built-in iSight camera, a first for Mac Notebook. This wowed audiences back in 2006, and led to a very cringy interaction between Phil Schiller and Steve Jobs as they demonstrated the amazing new technology. Who could I call? <coughs> oh, there's Phil! Where's Phil, I wonder? There he is. Hi, Steve. Hi, Phil. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm out here in the audience. I got a brand new MacBook Pro with its built-in iSight camera. It's a blast. There's Phil right there. <laughs> Despite monumental shifts in the performance and hardware of the new MacBook Pro, the design is nearly identical to the PowerBook that preceded it, a design that dates back to 2003. Despite its age, I think the design has aged well. Even after 15 years, it still looks sleek and fresh. Though the MacBook Pro wowed audiences with its exciting features, the beginning of this new era of Apple wasn't without its drawbacks. Within days of the first models getting into the hands of eager customers, reports of whining, airport problems, flickering displays especially at maximum brightness, and excessive heat plagued the device. By April, Apple had revised the MacBook Pro five times an absolutely absurd amount of changes to make in the first two months of shipping. In addition to its rocky launch, the original MacBook Pro was obsolete pretty much immediately. Its 32-bit core duo was 
almost overnight superseded by the 64-bit Core 2 duos introduced in late 2006 in the MacBook and MacBook Pro. The original Pro lost its support in 2010, just four years into its life, when OS X Lion nixed 32-bit processors. Many people reminisce about the good old days of Apple when innovation was coming near monthly. However, I think Apple's current slower pace does have some advantages. In 2012, when this MacBook Pro was just six years old, Apple introduced the Retina MacBook Pro. Just six years into its life, we had Retina displays, quad-core i7 processors, and SSD-only storage. Well, this machine still had a half gigabyte of RAM and 128 megabytes of VRAM and 32-bit processors. Even in 2012, these specs were laughable. A 2012 MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has aged quite well in the last six years, and many people are perfectly fine with laptops even older than that. Despite its short life, rocky start, and less than original design, the first generation MacBook Pro ushered in a new era of computing. And for that, I think it deserves a spot in the Computing Hall of Fame. This computer really is one of the most significant computers Apple has ever made. And for that, it should be celebrated.